to keep up to date with our latest videos, please hit the subscribe button below. Hi, welcome to this video from racingbetdata.com. Uh, in this video, what we're going to be looking at is how you analyse in-play horse racing uh, trades uh, and looking at it from a systematic approach. So I'm highlighting here some of the recent tweets in the last week or so uh, where horses have been matched at low as 1.01 in running um, and have gone on to be beaten. So the question is, is this a profitable long-term strategy and how would you test it? That's what we're going to show you. So it might be that laying or backing at 1.01 has never even been a consideration of yours. Uh, why would somebody want to stake that level of money to run return potentially such a, a small uh, return on their back? Or equally, why would somebody want to lay something which is, after all, um, a 99.01% certainty to win? Um, you might have also noticed as well, if you look at some of the horse racing, football, cricket, golf, any of the markets, in fact, on Betfair, you might see that there's a large sum of cash before the event already waiting to be matched at 101. Uh, it might be a bit of a head scratcher. Why would somebody want to do this? Why is that money sat there at that stage? I've brought up to tomorrow's race card, uh, the first race of the day tomorrow at Beverly, uh, just over 24 hours time. And if we look at the favourite Cara Christie, uh, we can see by bringing up Cara Christie's details here that there's already £1,500 sat ready to be matched at 1.01 from a laybacker. So somebody already anticipating that they want to lay that horse if it hits 1.01. So that begs the question, well, is this a profitable long-term strategy? To be able to test that and analyze it, you need data. And that's where we come in. Um, so heading over to our data dashboard, you'll be able to export this data um, and then analyze it further. Like I've shown you already with the tweets, uh, over the last 10 days or so, we've already seen at least three, four different occasions where a horse has traded down to 1.01 and has been beaten. That doesn't seem to represent, on that small sample size, a 99.01% certainty that that horse will go on to win, which is what the odds are suggesting. Odds, remember, are a representation of the probability or the likelihood of something happening. So to conduct the test over a longer period of time, like I said, you need data. Um, and this is where you can get it. Our data dashboard will allow you to export data. It goes back to 2002, but remember Betfair odds weren't commonly available um, around 2002. So from 2009 onwards, we have pretty much full coverage of the Betfair starting price, the in-play high and low, and the pre-race high and low. And remember all of the prices held within the data dashboard are based on where there was a minimum match of a hundred pounds or your current currency equivalent. So without further ado, let's get on and export some data. What I'm going to do, scroll down to the bottom here, and I'm going to export the years 2018, 2019, 2020, and 2021. Now, to do that blindly without any filtering is a huge amount of data. So probably more than your Excel and your computer could handle. Um, and would also put an enormous strain on our server depending what Excel version you have as well, you might also exceed your row capability. So what we've done is broken down, the website will allow you to export up to 60,000 rows, broken it down at 60,000 rows at a time. So to do this, you'll have to do a couple of um, separate exports and knit the data together. It may not take, uh, it well, it will certainly save you time in the long run compared to any other means of obtaining such a vast array of data. So what I'm going to do is get on with this downloading. I'll fast forward the video a little bit. And then once I've got the data in place, I'm going to show you how you can start analyzing it. Once you've completed the data export, and I've obviously fast forwarded that video up, there's no point you seeing me clicking through uh, several times to get all the data and stitch it together, you end up with about half a million rows. So you can see that quite a significant amount of data. And that took me about 15 minutes to, to export half a million rows. And obviously, if you've got a, a higher spec PC and super fast broadband, that might take you uh, less time than it's taken me to complete, for instance. So this is what you'll be um, presented with once you've exported. And then it's just a case of pasting all those exports together. So you've got them all in one big file. Then what you need to do is go to pivot table. Um, well, I've said this is what you need to do. This is what I'm showing you 
uh, how to analyze. Now I've selected um, four years worth of data, 2018, 19, 20 and 21. Obviously you can look at data ranges outside of that. You can look at different uh, traded prices, but, but this video specifically is to look at trading at 101 uh, and whether it's profitable or not. So I've already set up a little pivot table here. And what I've done is put in the uh, in play minimum uh, into the um, filter section of the pivot table. Now I've selected 1.01 on there. Um, where there's a zero or 1001, that is where Betfair did not turn the market in play or they did not offer in play on that betting, betting market for whatever reason. Uh, and that's their default uh, odds value to determine that it was a non uh, in running market. So I've selected 1.101 only. Uh, and then what we want to do is add in some additional controls. So we want to add in uh, the place into the row mark, uh, row section here. So these are all the places that the horse, horses that traded down to 1.01 .01 in running. These are all the finishing places. So we can put in there a uh, finishing place if we like. Now, obviously you've got first, which will be the majority, second, third, uh, all the way down. And then you've got some non-numeric. So you've got BD brought down, disqualified, fell, pulled up, slipped up, unseated rider. Now I'm actually gonna uh, eliminate the disqualified ones because these are primarily, I'm assuming here, no fault of the horse really. It's a, probably a jockey error or potentially failed sample. Um, so the disqualification might have come after the event. So the horse might have actually won that race in terms of the finishing position. So I'm just gonna take those out just to avoid any element of doubt. So I'm gonna unfilter uh, disqualified and that leaves us with the remaining in there. Um, so what, what we can do is then quite simply look at how many uh, occurrences there are. So I've put in counted decimal, we can put any one of these in as a, um, as a determining factor to get your value. And you can see that the, the lion's share of um, horses that traded to 1.01 .01 at a minimum of 100 pounds in running finished first. So we expect that. But what does it mean in terms of profitability? So we've already said that there's there was fifteen hundred pounds sat uh, on a horse for tomorrow already there as lay money. Um, so getting to the front of the queue is quite important in this. So I'm going to run the simulation, assuming that any uh, value that we put down on that horse was matched. But real world scenario dictates that being further up the queue, so the earlier you can get that money on the more likely it is that you get matched. So for the purpose of this simulation, we're purely gonna look um, at the values, assuming that there was a match on every trade that was placed. Now to keep this easy, what we're gonna suggest is that our lay stake was 10 pounds, uh, which means our liability is uh, the stake times the odds. Uh, minus the stake. So just turn that to a monetary cell. Uh, so you can see here that our lay stake is £10, our liability uh, is 10p. For every horse that we put a lay, a lay bet at 101, our liability is 10p. So if it goes on to win, we lose 10p. If that horse does not go on to win and our bet is match, we win £10. But we also need to figure in, uh, factor in the commission and I'm going to put that as 2%. So that means our returns are as follows. So returns is stake minus stake times commission. Uh, so returns are £9.80. So anything other than a finishing place of one first, we would win £9.80. So Let's do the simulation here. So 47,700. So this is how many bets we would have placed or trades we would have placed that would have been matched. Okay, so not all, obviously we would be doing, as I said, there was 500,000, nearly half a million rows. So that's nearly half a million uh, trades that you'd have to put into the market uh, over the course of four years. But obviously the benefit of having this data is we can do a simulation in less than an hour. Um, so what we're going to say is 
this value here. And as per instructions on other videos on pivot table, we don't need to hard code that. We can cell reference that. And what we're going to say is that value times this, and then we want to put a minus in front. So as you'd expect there for 47,700 losing trades, that equates to um, a deficit of 4,770 pounds that we would have lost of all of those trades. Now, what we can do is drag this one, uh, actually, because these are a slightly different formula, I'll just hard code this one in, and then we're gonna change it to a place to equal the cell. And we're gonna say times that amount, and we fix that one in. So you can see there for all of the horses that finish second, our winnings would outweigh uh, the losses for the horses that finish second. And we can drag this all the way down and then what we can do is apply a sum to that range. And that shows you that in theory, laying every single horse, so over half a million horses, about 10% of those would have been matched, okay? And then 47,700 of those would have gone on to win and the remainder would not have won the race. And that would have led to a profit, overall profit of just over 1,500 pounds over the course of those four years. OK, now, like I said, this assumes that every single lay bet that you put in, every single horse that reaches 1.01 .01 in running matches your bet. Now, that is the one unknown. And like I said, the, the earlier you can get that bet into the market, uh, the, the better your chances of that horse getting matched or that trade getting matched if that horse hits 101. What we know for certain is that every single winning horse, your stake will be taken because the 101 soon flips over to the lay side as soon as the horse has crossed that line. Um, what we don't know and what you can't quantify is what percentage of all of these other ones would have been matched in running uh, if you had put your lay in. Like I said, market position is key here. But looking at the simulation, you can see and you can start to understand now why when we look at horses running tomorrow, there's already 1,500 pounds worth of lay betters money sat in the market ready to be taken up.